Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Talk About It Tuesday. And I have a special guest with me today by the name of Egypt. Now, me and this guy has been friends for years. I've known him for at least 10 years plus. Um, yeah. He's always been a life of the party, always <laughs> held it down, had many friends. I mean, we go way back. We hung out and had some great memories together. <laughs> and um, I was on Facebook one day and I saw that he was telling his story about how he beat addiction. And that compelled me to ask him to tell his story, because one thing we like to do on this platform is we like to help others. If your story yeah. can go somewhere and help at least one person, I know we have done our job. So with that being said, um, just go ahead and introduce yourself, Egypt. Hey, everybody. My name is Egypt. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. But me and Brandy, me, me, Rox, Roxy, or Brand, which one do you want me to say? You, you can call me Brandy, that's fine. Okay, me and Brandy met when I went to Alabama State University in Montgomery and I was in the marching band, um, the marching hornets. Um, let me see, I sing, I play trombone, I dance a little bit, all those good things, but most, me and Brandy was known for being the life of the party wherever we went in Montgomery. Uh, everybody was requesting that we be at every spot in every situation we no was doubt. in the midst of the <laughs> No <laughs> so, doubt. But, you know, um, we all eventually grow up and we all go our separate ways and life happens. And, you know what I'm saying? I think that's what happened in the last, like, 15 years? 15 years, yeah. yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we always held each other down. We were like family. Mm -hmm. We had, like, yeah. a really big family. We did. Um, when we were living in Montgomery and we had like some of the best times you could ever imagine. So um, so you went back to Detroit. Yeah. OK, so tell us about what happened and how did this even get started? OK, I'm going to try to keep it short for y'all or I may not be able to, but we'll, we'll just we'll just take it one step okay, at a time. Do what okay. you got to do. You know, you're not on a time schedule here. OK, cool. So, well, first I went to Orlando. Um, I left Montgomery and went to Orlando. In uh, Montgomery, me and my roommates um, weren't really getting along. <laughs> and um, I, decided to, I decided to move on. You know what I'm saying? I decided that um, I had gone as far as I can go. So I thought in Montgomery and my mom suggested that I move to Florida. Now my dad is in Detroit, but my mom is in Florida. So I came to Florida and I got into this relationship, right? Mm -hmm. um, the relationship was so serious, guys, that we moved in together and we were together for like four years. And um, I've always been like a relationship oriented kind of person. So everything was going great. I mean, I'm talking, we had date nights. I mean, we, we had the, the, the household marriage thing going on and everything was great um, until eventually one day, um, I picked up that phone of his and I saw that he was entertaining other people via social media. Mm -hmm. Now, I really didn't have any proof that anything actually happened sexual wise, but you know, my heart was broken because I don't cheat. You know what I'm saying? I don't do stuff like that. And I had no idea, no suspicions that anything, I'm talking about like three, four years, that anything was ever going on. And, mm -hmm. um, I decided to stay in the relationship anyway, but now because the trust was broken, I became the toxic person because everything he did from that point on, every little move he made, I was accusing. Yes. So even though I said, I forgive you, um, my actions didn't show that. And so eventually he got tired of me and then we ended up separating and breaking up. When that happened, um, um, I had because I made him the center of my world. I didn't remember how to survive when we broke up without him. It happened. And so, yeah, I, was, I mean, I was broken. I mean, yeah. broken. I had never ever in my life felt that broken over anybody else besides this one situation. I mean, I've never felt nothing like that in my life. I was gone. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
Yeah. I was making a lot of money because in Orlando, it um, being a server and a bartender in Orlando eat at restaurants or and or clubs, you make so much money. Yeah. <laughs> so, I can um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. And it, with personality, does, personalities like me and you, you know how much money we made in Montgomery doing that. Exactly. Girl, if you come to Orlando, you're going to own it. I'm oh. telling you, <laughs> I'm talking about coins. I'm not serving right now, but we'll get back into that later. Um, yeah. Most um so when he left, um, I, 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 I was like, okay, I don't want to be bothered with my family. I don't want to be bothered with anybody. So I decided to move into hotels and I was living from hotel to hotel every night because I was making that much money that, you know what I'm saying? I could do that. I just didn't want to have my own place anymore. I just didn't want to, everything reminded me of him a little bit for some reason. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'm just going to be a hoe like everybody else is. <laughs> if you can't beat them, join them. The only problem with that was is that I was so relationship oriented that I didn't know how to just randomly go around sleeping with different people exactly. and not feeling guilty about it. Exactly. And so I, I was hanging um, with the wrong groups of people. And I was just trying on groups of people like there was underwear. I was just trying on different groups, living in a hotel, thinking I was balling, balling out because I can afford a hotel, a different hotel every night. I thought that was, I thought that, can I cuss here? Yeah. I'm allowed to cuss? Okay. I thought I was a shit. So I was like, okay, I can, I, I'm, I'm doing a damn thing. I'm drinking. I got a hotel room every night at different hotels. I'm the shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, um, right. I just won't tell nobody that I don't have no place to stay when they say, where's your real house at? I'm just going right. to say, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm visiting. Technically, I'm not from Orlando, right? So I can say I'm visiting. Okay. So I got introduced to cocaine first. Oh, wow. Okay. Before my drug of choice. Okay. And cocaine just made me want to party more. It made me want to um, club hop more. It didn't really want to help me to be a hoe or sleep around. I just wanted to talk your ear off and then go to the next club. Yeah. So cocaine okay, just reminded me of like popping back. What, we, what they used to call that back in the day? Um, an uh, XPO. That's what that's what cocaine reminded me of. You know, what I'm saying just, okay. just sniffing XPO the entire night, and okay. so um, that didn't help me with my quest to be a hodo. You know, what I'm saying, and I met the wrong person the wrong night at a sexual encounter. Um, and to help me loosen up, they introduced me to what they call crystal meth, and or they call it tea or Tina or ice. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Crystal okay. and okay. what they, what he, how he pitched it to me was, this is a sexual drug. It stimulates your sex drive. It, it takes it to a whole nother level to where you can let your guard down a little bit. I said, mm. okay. So me being an overachiever that I am, I Googled and looked it up first. And I saw that if you smoke it, it causes over time, it causes your teeth to fall out. I right. said, that's not going to be my story. Right. He pulled out. He said, "Okay, I got the." <laughs> he said, "I got the perfect solution for that." And he pulls out a syringe. Now, when I think of syringes, the first thing I think about is heroin use. You know what I'm saying? Where you nod yeah. out. And, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, I see people. I heard. I heard that's a coin toss. You could die from that. He's like, "But this is not heroin. This is the sex drug I told you about." And he put that in my arm, and the rest was history. I became. I think I ended up becoming the godfather of being a hoe. I was instantly hooked. I didn't drink no more. I didn't drink no more. I didn't do coke no more. I didn't do anything else but crystal meth, and I became the whole of Babylon. The God, I, I became one of the elder gods of holism. I rewrote the whole book of being a hoe. Really? That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable yeah. because you know I've known you. We've hung out. Yeah. And you have always been in a relationship. In a relationship, yeah. Not so it was new for me. You just would meet people, okay, but that would be that. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why it's like, wow, to hear you yeah. say it. So, um, if y'all were to put a gun in my head and say, how many sex partners have you had? I would not be able to say, you might as well pull the trigger. Just pull it, because I ain't going to even try to fathom, gather, or um, collect that information. Right. That's how that's how beaten this drug had me. <laughs> um, so so now I have a new addiction. Uh -huh. Oh, go ahead, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So let me ask you this right quick. So like you said, you were instantly hooked. Did it give you the feeling that you were looking for? Did it make you um, forget? That and more. I, I mean, I completely let my my morals completely went out the back door. 
Um, I didn't care anymore. But, and that was the thing. I didn't care about who I was sleeping around with or how many people. I didn't even care. It, I mean, it got me so gone that I didn't even care about protection anymore. Oh, wow. That's coming up. We're going to talk about it. In the, it's, it's coming up. It's, it's a part of the story. So we're going to keep going. Right, uh, let me know when you want to come in the food on. That's what's up. You want me to go now? Go ahead. Keep going now. Go you got some questions. No, okay. You go ahead. You go ahead. So everything that I said I would never do or I would never be like, it ended up happening. They say this, I mean, what we, call, what we have is a disease called addiction, right? It's a disease. It's a mind disease. And what, just to break that down so you can understand real quick, um, you know how your body cannot survive without food, right? Let's say four days goes by, your body goes into panic mode, right? Right. Um, it, it goes into survival mode. You know what I'm saying? Where you, I mean, you, I mean, after like, let's say you haven't eaten or drunk anything in a week, you go into survival mode. You'll do any and everything to get some kind of nourishment. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You go into survival mode. You'll do, you might steal. You might do, you won't do something to get some food in your system. Yeah. Well, after using drugs for a period of time, whatever your drug of choice may be, because eventually it takes you there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What your mind, your brain does, it switches. The um the survival I means the most important thing in your mind now becomes the drug of choice. So screw food, screw all of it, screw nourishment, the drug becomes the most important thing. So now when you cross that invisible line of being hooked, you know what I'm saying? Um now without it, your body panics, your body goes into survival mode. And that's why you see people when they call us crackheads, meth heads, coke heads, doing anything and everything to get that drug again, it does it. You know what I'm saying? You become not yourself anymore. So I would oh, look at other... second. let me I have a question before you continue. So okay. were you still working? Were were you still in, in you know making your money and you know oh. my family, what happened was my mom's side of the family found out about me doing meth because I looked at it like this. They was all smoking weed, drinking their liquor, and you even had a couple of the cokeheads on they side on my mom's side of the family. And that was deemed as normal. It was normal. No, nobody had a problem with, with what they were doing. So because they were doing their things too, different family members, different, you know what I'm saying? Whoever was doing whatever they were doing, they were so comfortable with being, I mean, saying that out loud that I figured I can just say, well, hey, guess what I do? I do crystal meth. And then they were like, they do their thing, I do my thing. You know what I'm saying? But when they found out that I was using syringes and that they, they took it to a whole other level, level and they started having these interventions and I was the only one that needed help out of the munch. So that made me resent them. You know what I'm saying? Now I know now that they just cared, but it made me resent them. So I dipped and I left and went back to Detroit. Why did I do that? I don't know if y'all know about Detroit, but Detroit is the oh, hood of the yeah, hood of the hood. Yeah. We, invented, we invented the hood. Yeah. <laughs> and I went back to Detroit. Let me tell you, just because you change places does not mean you won't see the same kind of people there. I met the same kind of crystal meth heads that you, you know what I'm saying, if not worse. I met the kingpins that said the, the, king, the people who sell to the dealers. I was sleeping with them. Wow. Everything I said I would not do, I was doing. I said I wouldn't steal from my family. I, ended up, I, I moved in with my grandma. I, and I was so, so gone and so wanted to do it, do this so much that I was waiting till she would go to sleep. I would steal her brand new car. I would be gone for days. I would take money out of her purse. Um, I sold her for her beautiful fur coats, you know what I'm saying? And, and lied and said somebody broke into the house and stole them out the, from out my room upstairs. Um, you name it, I did it. You know what I'm saying? And whenever my, I mean, anybody would try to like stop me in my from partying, you know what I'm saying? I felt like they were attacking me, teaming up on me. They, they don't want me to have fun. Can't they just see I'm just having fun. I'm not addicted to this. It's just what I do for fun. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, so one question, did you feel nah. addicted at that point in time? In the back of my mind, I knew, but denial is a strong, strong, strong force of evil. <laughs> uh, I knew in the back of my head, but I would tell myself anything to keep going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's where things start falling apart. So nine whole years, y'all, of using meth. But Roxy tell y'all when she knew me, when we well, we, we still know each other, excuse me. When we were hanging, I was about what, 250, 260 in weight? Oh, yeah. Most I was always a, a, a thick kind of dude. As y'all can see, I'm slim now, but that's because I'm a gym head now. But um 
I went from 260 to 120. Wow. I look like a walking skeleton. But in my mind, that's a, that denial thing. I was like, I look damn good. I always wanted to be this size right here. <laughs> so I, that just that just added fuel to my to my bullshit. Yeah. You know, so the bullshit that I tell myself to keep going. Yeah. And so everything started catching up with me. That 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 seventh year, everything started catching up to me. And I couldn't get rid of this cold. And my grandma was like, after forgiving me a thousand times for doing a thousand things to her, you know what I'm saying? You be, I started becoming angry. I noticed that. I was angry with all the time. You know what I'm saying? My mood was changing because I felt like nobody would just leave me alone and let me be on some of my own devices. You know what I'm saying? Why couldn't they just let me get high in peace was my question I was asking. Yeah. And I had this really bad cold. Now, keep in mind, I've slept with thousands of people. Maybe thousands is an over-exaggeration. But mm -hmm. like I said, I can't tell you the number because the drug had me so gone, y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, wait, before I say that, things that you say you would never do. Right? So you know me when, I, when me, we were hanging out. I was always in the gay terms, the top, right? Yes. I, will never, I said I would never be nobody's bottom. When I was doing this drug, y'all, I was a bottom top, burst, upside down, splits. You know what I'm saying? You had the drug. We're, okay, let's go. You, you, want the, you, want, you, want, you can do whatever you want to my body as long as you got that drug and that syringe in your hand. We can go. Let's go. Wow. Let's go. I was gone. So yeah. I had this cough, right? Mm -hmm. It was not leave. And I all I have you know, Roxy, I have year round sinuses. So do you. You yes. know what I'm saying? And so we're always sneezing it up or got some kind of cold. And my grandma's like, You've been coughing for like a week straight. I think we should take you to the hospital. And I was thinking, here, here it is, old bitch, go again. Grandma, you know I love you. I was like, <laughs> I, I love you, Grandma. You know I love you. But this is this is this is what I was in my big sure, Grandma. Not now. Yeah. Like, I was like, here it is, old bitch, go again. Trying to stop my damn party. She know I'm finna go out. <laughs> <laughs> and she talked about some going to the long ass emer emergency room so they could keep me for hours. Oh hell, she don't know. And so I was like, no, it's good. It's just the cold. She was like, we're going. I was like, motherfucker, did it. You know what I'm saying? I was pissed. <laughs> we get to that hospital. Yeah. They doing a test. I'm like, okay, they're gonna tell me nothing's wrong, so she can feel stupid. And you know, saying so I can't hurry up. And I ain't even ride back with her. I'm gonna tell whoever going, whoever I'm fucking tonight, just pick me up. Yeah, the emergency. Room. That's how serious it was to me. You know, what yeah. I'm saying yeah. that doctor come out that room and he's like, you've got double pneumonia, and we ain't letting you go nowhere. <laughs> and I, he's like, and because of that, you know, what I'm saying you being a gay male now, how? How, you know what I'm saying, how, what kind of stereotype is this though? He was right, but I was thinking this in my head. Because of that fact, we had to test you for HIV. Mm. So well, I was know like, that's really? the stereotype. You know that is. Right. I was like, oh but shit. But females she's too. But females too. Female yeah. Too. Really? I, I was like, okay, the shit's about to hit the fan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know for a fact. Now, this was a reality check, y'all. Let me tell you, this is how you're going to know that I was so gone. I knew for a fact that I had been sharing dirty needles, number one. I know for a fact that I've had multiple, topo, topo sex partners with no protection. I was like, well, it got to be. It's no way I cannot not have HIV. You know what I'm saying? I just haven't been giving a fuck for nine years. You know what I'm saying? He's got to come. So when he came back and he said, you are HIV positive, we got to lock you down. You can't go in for where for like a week and a half. You know what I'm saying? We, because your numbers are through the roof. You know what I'm saying? It's like you just haven't been to get a checkup in like, 20, like years, huh? I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's about right. And by God's grace that you were not dead. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. He said, um, I mean, I, now one thing about me, I have never been ashamed to say what I'm doing. But he said, so what have you been doing? I said, I use crystal meth. I use the needle. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to be able to find no vein when you try to draw blood. You might as well go to the legs because the arms are fucked. <laughs> I keep it all the way real with the doctor. You know what I'm saying? When I finally go see it, what's that? I go on the You know what I'm saying? That's so a good thing. Like, you are HIV positive. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you're not beyond saving. We can start shooting the medicine up in your veins now and we can get you. I mean, luckily, the no, double pneumonia is not related to HIV. You just caught double pneumonia because you've been using too much drugs and your, your, your immune system is down. 
So it wasn't related to HIV. That's where it becomes deadly, where um, you're so sick that it's a form of that, that it's directly related to HIV and it usually takes you up out of there. I didn't have that one. I just had pneumonia. Right. That's just cool. That was the grace of God. I can always say, y'all, God has always been saving and shaping and paving some kind of way for me because they gave me the medicine and I automatically went to undetectable. Now, I don't know if you guys know what undetectable it is. Um, it means that if you take, um, well, today it means if you take one pill per day, you go, I mean, it goes down so small that it can't even be traced in tests. You can't even transmit it to anybody. And if you want to, if you're a guy, gay guy, I'm never going to do this. You can have a, a kid. That's not going to happen for me. But because um, I'm not going to go with a girl. So that's just me. <laughs> So you know what I'm saying? I, I, I spoil my nieces and nephews. They got about my sisters and brothers got enough kids for me, baby. I just pretend they mine and take pictures with them and say it's my kids. But um, they were able to. They were they healed me up real quick and in a week. And you would think that that would stop me from and tell me let's get some help. But my disease told me, good. Now you've got an excuse to use more. You're about to die anyway. You might as well go out with a bang. And I went right back to shooting dope up again, y'all. Wow. Um, really? Then, yeah. Went right back. It's not worse. You know what I'm saying? I, I was like, I got an excuse now. So now when my mom called me from Florida, when my sisters called me from Florida, when my brothers, my dad, who is the chief of police in Detroit, whenever they call me, I have an excuse now. I have HIV. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm using. So any excuse will do. Any excuse to keep using will do. We'll use anything. We'll pull anything out the hat to keep using to keep doing what we ain't got no business doing in the first place. And that was my ticket. HIV was my golden ticket. I said, now these motherfuckers can get off my back and I can use a piece. Baby, you <laughs> still funny as <laughs> So, um, um, I got into, you, you know how my temper used to be. Now that, some things don't change. Well, it's changed now, two years later. I mean, two years of being clean. I've done a 180, but I got into a fight in Detroit over drugs and sex, I think uh, he gave me some drugs and I didn't want to have sex with him because he was a little bit too ugly. I just couldn't fathom. There wasn't no drugs in the world that would make me, I was like, oh my God, you like jabbing a hood off of Star Trek. I just couldn't. And I was like, you got to give me like a triple shot, shot for this, honey, so you can look like Brad Pitt or some shit or something. Put extra in the needle or something. But um, okay. we got to a fight. Like and I dipped and I left this house and I snatched the drugs. <laughs> running. Baby, you done ran off on the plug. Yeah. And it was raining and my high ass is running over a bridge. I don't even know why I was on this bridge and I slipped and fell down the bridge down to the freeway and broke my, broke my motherfucking ankle. Oh my God. High shit. Back in the hospital and my mom coming from Florida is like, okay, you got to come here and get some help. You got to come back to Florida. You got, you, because Detroit, you know, you know everybody. That yeah. was us slowing you down, baby. Because yeah. like, somebody's yeah. praying for you. Somebody's yeah. praying for you. Oh. And they still believe that you could change. Baby, that was yeah. nobody God slowing you down. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all, I like to say that, they, I mean, I, went, I did go back to Florida. And I like to say I got help immediately when I got here. But my mom... I was staying with her and I was going to my, I started going to Narcotics Anonymous on a regular before because they didn't have beds in the rehab yet. And I had to wait. And so to keep me at bay, I would go to the Narcotics Anonymous meetings every day so I can get my mind wrapped around how these people that are just like me have all this joy, have all this peace, and they're laughing about their past experiences. What the fuck? Are y'all high right now? Because y'all seem a little bit too joyful up in here in Narcotics Anonymous. And I wanted what they had, right? But my mom was, a, she was, she's a nitpicker and she's a clean freak and I'm living in her house and I didn't plan on living there. I just wanted to go to rehab and then get my own plan. I have our own plan, but God, when I tell you, you got to put a wrench in your plans. Sometimes yeah. your plans are not his plans. Yes. So I'm staying with her, but she's nitpicking about stupid stuff that in my mind is stupid. She, um, first of all, I'm trying to wrap my head around going to get help. And she's, like try to stop me from vaping. It, it was just too much. I was like, you know, I fucked this. And I went back out and relapsed and then started using in Florida. Started my career back up in Florida for a full year. You gotta be careful when when people when when you have family guys who are who are using who are, are active addicts, 
you got to be careful about around the, you know what I'm saying, the eggshells. You got to walk around on them. Let the rehab, I mean, the rehabs was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Let the rehabs do what the rehabs is going to do, which is their job. Because you're never, ever, ever going to be able to stop a person from doing what they, from doing what they want to do. They have to want to stop. It's yeah. like beating That's a dead right. horse. It's no way. You can't stop. Nobody could have stopped me until I was ready. That's right. So what made me stop was I started hallucinating. Now I can deal with all the shady people. I can deal with all the ugly people. I can deal with my family not talking to me. I can deal with them putting me out because the last year they put me out and I was homeless in Orlando. Walking around here, I was talking to myself like them. Y'all, y'all know you see the homeless people crazy and they, they be talking to themselves in the whole other world. That was me two, two years and two months ago. That's hard I can deal with all of that, huh? That's hard to imagine knowing you. You, you, yeah, and, uh, and like one twenty above twenty, I can deal with all of that. But what I couldn't deal with with was, oh, I can deal with um going down to animalistic living situations because I'm I'm in and out of the bandos, I'm sleeping around outside on benches, I'm talking to myself. But I know if I go to McDonald's and clean up real quick and get cute, all I got they still want me for my body. You know what I'm saying? So I can still go sleep with any low life. You know what I'm saying? a meth head, you know what I'm saying? That's how I felt. And I was happy being homeless because I'm like, now I finally have peace and I can use without them all being on my back, my family. Mm-hmm. And that's crazy. It's insanity, right? Right, right? What what made me throw in the towel with using was the hallucination started. And usually you hallucinate for a little bit and then it wears off as you get if you as you sober up or you know what I'm saying, you go a few days without using it wears off. Mm-hmm. But it, it, um, it became continuous and it didn't stop. And that scared me. That's when I finally called my mom and was like, okay, um, I think everybody, the whole world is after me. Everybody's trying to kill me. Um, everywhere I turn around. I had like three switchblades in each hand. I would be walking down the street like I was Wolverine or somebody. That's how crazy and gone I was because I thought everybody was after me. Everybody was trying to kill me. Everybody, and I thought everybody was in on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I I, even, I didn't even want to call my mom because I thought she was in on it too. And I was like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to come in with you, bitch, because I was going to slice and dice your ass too. Anybody can get these these this these dicing right now, honey, at this point. Wow. And so she's like, okay, you're, you're, you're almost gone. You should just go to a hospital and say you want to commit suicide. I did that, and that was the last night I ever used in my entire life. That was the last time I ever used drugs, guys. <laughs> wow. wow! I listen. That I'm 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 still a little trying to wrap the story around my mind because you know I I knew you. We mm-hmm. hung out so much that you know, well, like you said, we still know each other. But when we were like really, really, truly hanging out, like mm-hmm. that is so far. You have always been clean cut. Always been one of those people that I know walk with their head up and their chest out because you know you got it going on. Yeah. So, yes, it was, it's hard to believe. So that further lets me know that addiction is definitely real. Yeah, it's real. Definitely. And it can happen to anybody. You can blink your eye and it can be you. You never know where yeah. life can take you in the wrong person when life is taking you at do, do what because life is gonna do what it's gonna do whether you on board or not it's still gonna do what it's gonna do exactly. but whatever you know so you don't know how vulnerable you are in what situations anything mm-hmm. that is traumatizing heartbreak mm-hmm. abuse you know saying you never know yeah. in that moment of time what could happen and then what wrong person can walk into your life when that's going on. You know what I'm saying? People who are addicts are not bad people. They're usually good people who just made a wrong choice at mm-hmm. the wrong time. Yeah. And then they didn't even mean to get stuck there. They got stuck there and then the drug took off and it took over. You know what I'm saying? You're not you. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't me. Like the, the me today would never have stolen from my grandma's purse. Take the whole robbery and, and, and sold a person and say somebody broke into the house, stole her car. I can't even fathom stealing out of the, the Walgreens or the dollar store now. I'd be like, oh my God, I'm about to get arrested. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 crazy how you just not it's like somebody else is driving the car, but you see you see what everything that's happening, but you have no control. Somebody else is driving your your body is a car and somebody else is driving it, but you have no control. You just see everything that's going on. You just going for the ride. You know what I'm saying? So, 
Well, you know what? Um, I I got to say that you are very courageous. And I am so proud of you. And I'm so mm-hmm. glad that you have family members that actually care. I know you gave them hell. Yeah, I gave them hell. <laughs> but you know, they was always just still willing and ready to help you. You know, yeah. and like you said, you never know what a person is going through or what has happened to spark them to do some of the things. That's why we should not ever in our life judge people for the decisions they have made. Let's try to help mm-hmm. them because we don't know what they don't went through because What's going I know that was a traumatizing situation for you I know it was for you to take that situation and it escalated the way it did I know it was traumatizing for you because heartbreak you know, is very traumatizing it, it, is. it was and you know what the hard thing is okay this is the thing that I've learned first of all I want to say to anybody that's struggling rehab was the best thing that could have happened to me I Um, I did two back to back because I wanted to make sure that I got this thing right this time see what it is is we use because we stop wanting to feel okay we don't want to feel nothing no more at first we tell ourselves we tell ourselves this dream that it's fun we're doing it because it's fun and you know what I'm saying but we're running from something Something that we don't want to feel. It don't matter what drug it is. It can be coke. It can be weed. It can be liquor. It can be um, meth. It can be heroin. It can be any of those things. Molly, you know what I'm saying? But we're running from something. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to feel that. You know what I'm saying? Um, Life on life's terms is tough sometimes. And we say we're just going to have fun to take the edge off. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it progresses. And when you cross the invisible line into addiction, you know what I'm saying? It's just hard. So you gotta you gotta have compassion for those that you see out there that's struggling like that because they just made a wrong turn. <laughs> and they really not themselves. Um rehab was the best thing that happened to me to me because it taught me retaught me structure. It retaught me how to feel the feelings that I'm going through. It retaught me how to do little simple stuff like make up my bed and brush my teeth. I, I let all of those things go. It's crazy how to eat again and gain the weight back. As y'all see, I got the muscle going on now. I see, you know, I see, you know, I see, you know, I see. You know, yeah. I so see. Um, it taught me all of those things, how to do a resume again. Things that I had lost touch with because my reality had been shaken up for years. I I was always intelligent, you know what I'm saying? Yes, and I forgot, I, forgot. I lost all of that. And so, wow. but the thing is, they're tough on you. They're going to make you face what's going on that's making you use. It's not just the heartbreak. What else? What happened to you as a kid? We're gonna mm-hmm. go from we're gonna go from the we're gonna go from the root all the way on up. Mm-hmm. And you're worth it because it takes you away from the world. They cut you off from the world. You know what I'm saying? And they give you a vacation to where you can focus on you. But they're tough mm-hmm. on you though. And that's what you need. You know what I'm saying? If you if they come in there and say, come in and do whatever you want to do, then we're gonna walk all over them. So they're not mm-hmm. gonna they're not gonna play with us in rehab. But it was the best thing I got. As soon as I got done rehab, I start going to my meetings, y'all. I go to narcotics anonymous at least two, three times a week. You don't really have to do it that much, but I do it because I like to help other people as well. So mm-hmm. when I see new people coming in, you know what I'm saying? We're like a glimmer of hope now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I you listen to their story, you're like I was there. I you just told my story, new person. You know what I'm saying? And you give back what was so freely given to you. You pull somebody else back up and show them that you can get out of that dark space. Cause I did. I was just where you were. You know what I'm saying? And I got out and you can too. So that's why I go um, multiple times a week. So I so say I can remind myself and I can help somebody else. I don't ever want to forget where I came from. <laughs> exactly. Well, you um that's exactly what I was about to uh, ask you about rehab and how did that help you? So you definitely answered a lot of those questions. But also, um, when it comes to rehab, how long is a rehab session? Okay. So you have can I mean, you want me to be blatantly honest? Yes, most okay. definitely. Okay. Being blatantly honest, they have 30 day. They have 60 day and they have a year now and they have outpatient. To me, just being honest, outpatient means that I'm secretly not ready. I don't want to be locked down in here. You know what I'm saying? So to get my family off my back, I'm going to go to these little one or two session, hour sessions a week. And then saying, and then that to me is what outpatient means. It's no way that if you're fully addicted and you're in full Mm -hmm. active addiction, 
And you doing the shit I was doing, like stealing from your family, stealing cars, going to jail, fighting, sleeping around, sticking needles in your arm. It's no way you yeah. uh, outpatient is going to help you. That's just yeah. a joke. I agree. That's just, I agree. Yeah, it's no way. I agree. 30 days to me is that's that, that's not enough time. You're not going to be cured in no 30 days. You know what I'm saying? To me, that that's one step from outpatient. What I did was um, I did a three month program first. Mm-hmm. That to me broke me down because when I went in the first rehab, I was still trying to fist fight everybody. If I even heard the word faggot, I'm throwing blows, bitch. You know, what I'm, I'm the only gay in there too. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna teach you with this faggot. I'm gonna teach you about faggism, honey, and how we tap that ass still. So I was on that kick. I wasn't really trying to like learn to be clean yet, but they loved on me anyway. And they was this, they disciplined me hard. They like, look, we gonna put your ass up out of here. We gonna let you slab the first three. The first three you got into them first three fights. We gonna let you slab because we love you like that enough. But listen, you go back to being homeless and hallucinating after talking to yourself. I was like, oh shit, you're right. Yeah. So then I sat down. I started listening in class, and yeah. I start not picking out what what I wasn't like, but listening to the similarities that was going on around me. And I started mm-hmm. trying to tolerate people more. And I was like, well, this is a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Learning to get along with others and learning to release and stop holding grudges when we do get into it and learning to make amends and make up, become a brotherhood instead of fighting each other. Even if, even if we do, we make up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, we're getting better. So yeah. after that three months, I was like, it's no way I'm ready. Not in three months. You know what I'm saying? So I decided to go to another one that was six months. Now, um, keep in mind, don't let the people, I mean, um, people tell you that rehabs cost too much. Rehabs today are free. Free. I didn't pay for either one. The next one I went to was six months. It was a Salvation Army. If you can't never find anybody else that's free, Salvation Army is free. But let me tell you, Salvation Army is military style. You get yeah. up when they say that's get up. Deep. It's six months. You don't go nowhere until they say you can go somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You get smart with them. Your ass, your bags is getting put out. They're not going to play with you, but they reteach you and they guarantee you a job with Salvation Army. You know what I'm saying? Um, I did about, I made it like four months in Salvation Army, but I got into a fight. Then they put me out of there because they, they felt like I was too ratchet. Look, you would think after like, after eight months that I would, I would, I would, I would, I would have it by now. But this is my story. When I got put out there for a second rehab, my disease automatically says, see, you're trying to do the right thing and the people that's supposed to be helping you is do is against you. Don't get you one. Fuck that. Fuck this process. But I said, nope. Trick no good. I went and found me a recovery house. Now, what a recovery house is, guys, is a place that you go to when you're done with rehabs. It's like a real house. You got roommates. And it's like a safe blanket. You know what I'm saying? You got a curfew, but you're you're free now. You can get a job. And they make they drug test you every week to make sure you're on a straight and narrow. And when you save up enough money, you go get your own place. Ooh, so amazing. I did that next. And I stayed there two years. And um recently, guys, I just moved out and got my own apartment. So two oh, years ago, like that a month and a half ago. I got my own apartment, so you know what I'm saying? We doing good. We it's it's, it's a couch right now, but you know so I bought that couch myself for fourteen hundred dollars. So I'm doing good. I'm getting my life back, and it's cool. It's cool. I'm not ashamed about it either. I tell everybody, you know what I'm saying? Life teaches empty takes everybody different places, different ways. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And what happened to me happened to me, and it made me who I am today, and it made me a better me. So <laughs> well, because this is what I see. I see the person that I used to hang with. You are happy. You look healthy. Mm-hmm. You have always been very handsome. You look so good. Like I would never in my life believe you had ever done a drug. Like I'm just being serious. Mm-hmm. So I feel like God had always wanted you to tell the story. God mm-hmm. wanted you to help other people. And I know that it was hard and, and it was a lot going on because we we missed some years, like yeah. roughly like 10 years. We missed it. Yeah. However, I know life happens. And we always, when we start back talking, honey, it'd be like we just was talking yesterday. It's yesterday. So you know I what? It was I crazy did. because I, lo- I feel like I lost all of y'all when I started pick- when I picked the drugs up. You know what I'm saying? You, um, my, my, my frat brothers in, in the band, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I lost it for all of y'all using drugs, but it, it's it's crazy when I was using, I forgot that I even had friends. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I was, I was, in a, I was in a dark world. Yeah. 
I was in a real dark world, y'all, and I could not get out. I, no matter how hard I tried, I could not get out. And I was too ashamed to come around, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because I like, they're going to see my weight. They're going to see how skinny I am. They're going to see my arms. They're going to see all the holes in my arms. They're going to see me twitching. They're going to see me speed talking. Because one thing that we all, no matter what drug you are on, <laughs> once you cross addiction, you speed talk. I said, oh, here we go. We got all this. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You're right. You're right. We be gone. I was like, they don't know off rip that I'm using. So there's no way I'm going around my old friends because y'all don't have no kind of know about when it comes to the drug life. So I'm like, they going to say, how the fuck did you get here? So it was hard to come around y'all and tell y'all what was going on. And so that caused me to drift off even more because I was like, I'm alone. I'm definitely alone. My family don't understand. I know the good friends that I had definitely won't understand. And the church won't understand. They're going to try to, um, they're going to try to baptize me in a pool of water. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a way. <laughs> Who understands? And then you gravitate to the low lives of it. And that's mm-hmm. also doing the same drugs you're doing. And you just, mm-hmm. but it's just no life to live because everybody in the drug world is for themselves and it's cutthroat. They're all cutthroat. Everybody is, they will either kill you or they will do the shadiest stuff to you for the next high. Yes. It's not, you're never safe in that world. It was the worst experience of my life. But um, I was fucking. I saw, <laughs> that's what you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> I got the, I did the one thing I said I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? All right, that's all I got out of it was fucking. Everything else was misery. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so listen. Like I said, okay, you definitely don't look like you fit the bill of a person that would ever do a drug. Um, Mm. So therefore, you said it was really relatively easy to get the drug because people wanted you. You're attractive. Mm -hmm. So what did you say to people that are, you know, like yourself, you know, because you know how it is when you're attractive. Mm -hmm. People will pretty much give you anything. So, oh my god, I wish I wish that um hold on one second. Um I wish that I can show you guys a okay, okay, this is what I can say to that. Um looks I tell you fade. what, when when um when we're done, you can send me some stuff and I can put it on the okay. I got a picture, guys, of let me show you the good looks fade away. Wow. Right? They fade away. I got a picture. Y'all would not even believe. I look like crackhead Sam. And you were like, that is not you. And I could, I took a um, two-year clean picture and I put them next to each other. I'm going to send it to uh, Roxy. And it, it's like two different people. But God gave it right back to me when I got clean. You know what I'm saying? Um, my it face is. was sinking. I look like a skeletor. You know what I'm saying? My, uh, it was horrible. I can't even. I, I look at the picture and I don't even believe that that was me. So what made um, you take that picture at that point in time? Because I know you said that oh, you... I thought I was fine. I thought I was fine there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't tell me I wasn't sexy in the picture. In, picture in, in the picture, it was foolish, too. It was foolish. I didn't even try to pull. I just, I'm looking like... I, I'm looking high on my mind. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was foolish times 10, and you couldn't tell me I wasn't fine. But see, eventually... I knew that God did not want me in that world because even though I thought I was sexy, everybody desired to have sex with me on every hand and give me drugs for it. Every time I would give in and have sex with these different men, I still didn't feel good about it. I just knew that somewhere in the back of my head, I don't, I don't belong in this world. I'm not supposed to be here. Even the people I was using would say, you don't belong here. You're not like us. You know what I'm saying? You got a light around you. And you know what I'm saying? And, it, it, and they would start getting mad and wanting to fight me because I was always still in a good mood. I wasn't miserable like them. I wasn't, I was always laughing and trying to, I was still trying to, I was trying to befriend other drug addicts. You know what I'm saying? While we're using. I'm like, well, look, we don't have to just fuck. Can we still hang out and be cool? And have, they didn't want no parts of that. They were like, no, we want to fuck me. You get the fuck out. That, that's all they wanted. I'm like, damn, we can't be friends. We can't be, we can't be friends. I'm like, damn, these y'all just fuck around. Anyway. So, it was never no making fun. I mean, no friends in the mess world. And then I was like, I just don't belong here. But how do I stop though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Not only was shooting dope an uh, addiction now, sex became an addiction. So when I went to rehab, they said, well, it looks like you got to give up sex for a little while. 
I was like, what? But I did. I had to, I, had, I, I, I didn't have, I didn't have no sex for like a year and a half. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, and you know what's crazy? I got this apartment all by myself. You y'all hear the echo? I'm still furnishing her. You know what I'm saying? Check by check. You know what I'm saying? Got to do it what a check at a time. I love. I'm check at a time. Uh, and, and I'm not serving right now. I'm taking it slow. You know what I'm saying? Um. I don't want to jump back into just making troughs of money like that. So I'm taking it slow. You know what I'm saying? And I, I got this whole apartment to myself and I still ain't had nobody over here yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's good. Because I'm, I'm better, I'm better than that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I can I can get somebody who actually respects my body and you know what I'm saying, yes. who's looking for what I'm looking for. And so I'm trying to get back into the Egypt that was relationship oriented. So I, I chill. Yeah. I just chill. And you know what? That's showing a lot of discipline. It's showing that mm-hmm. you are disciplined and you are ready and you want to go in the right direction. You yeah. said something that really make a lot of sense when you said a person that's an addict have to want to get better. And mm-hmm. I've always felt like that because I know family members have chased and chased and chased other family members Ooh. and they would never come in. They would go um, I put my family through so much heartache because they chased, they screamed, they got mad, they got depressed, they got sad, they were scared I was going to die. Yeah. And it was nothing that in my mind, in my sick mind, because we are sick when we're using, you know what I'm saying? Yes. yes. We don't feel their pain. We feel nothing. And so you're mm-hmm. chasing us. And if we're not ready, that's all you're doing is chasing us because we're always going to view you as the enemy. We're going to hurt you. Okay, I want to let you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. We're going to hurt you trying to help us. Yeah. The only thing that can bring us out of that is enough pain, finally. Yes, okay. You know what I'm saying? We ain't to, when we, if we ain't feeling enough pain, you know what I'm saying, and we still got a, a few runs in us, that's if we make it out alive. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> While we experimenting, you know what I'm saying, pain Pain eventually brings us to our knees. And then when, you know what I'm saying, we get sick and tired of getting sick and tired, then we ready to get some help. But until then, I'm telling you, the best thing my family could have did for me was put me out on the streets and make me homeless. That was the best decision they could have made. Because why? As long as they was helping me, as long as they was giving me money, as long as they let me use the power, as long as they was taking me back in, as long as they were doing any of those things, I was gonna take advantage of that shit and didn't give a fuck. I was a cold-hearted assassin and gave no shits about it. The best thing y'all can do is put their ass out. It sounds harsh, I know. Get that kick they ass to the curb and close the door because as long as we see an enabler, we sense it. We mm-hmm. sense it's like a it's like a tiger looking for prey. We sense all that. We sense your love. We sense your care. We sense your worry, and we feed off of that. And we get whatever we can out of it, just so we can get the next high. Kick their ass out, close the door until they feel enough pain. Then they'll come. They'll come trying to get some help. And that's the best advice I can get to families. Get kick they ass to the curb. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're telling the whole um, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Well, let me ask you this, just so people um, out here listening can understand exactly how this thing goes. So how old were you when you started using those drugs? Because they getting younger and younger, Egypt. Trust me. You know what's crazy? And that's true, because... You, I mean, I'm being honest on this show, right? Okay. Yeah. So, um, I want you to tell well, your story. Yeah, I, I fucked a couple of like 18 year olds when I was using, and they was like, they was, they was more met out than I was. I'm like, hey, they, they tweaking more than me. I'm like, damn, y'all starting out young. I didn't even start meth until I was like 31. I was just, I waited, I, I waited until I was good in season to get into drugs. You know what I'm saying? And these kids be like 17, 18, 19, full blown T heads. I'm like, wow. they know how to use a syringe better than I know how to use a syringe. Wow. They just go. And at first, I thought that because that, that's only who I was having sex with at first, I thought it was just like the whites that were into crystal meth. And then when um, when the whites got boring, I, I, I start going to the blacks to have sex too. And they was just as, they, it, was in the, it was in the black community as well. So it's, it's circulating everywhere on both sides. They were saying it was just a white man's rub, but no, honey, it's, uh, everybody's using it. And it's, um, it done crossed over into the gay scene. Wow, are you serious? Yeah. 
Yeah, they call them. They call them T heads now, and they everywhere. It's in the gay scene. The gay scene. If you look on Facebook, you'll you'll see people asking questions like, "Damn, does everybody do T now?" Because that's I'm. A, it's, it's 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 rising. It's rising. Um, you gotta realize that um, they already view us as gays as naturally sexual. Sexual. Mm-hmm. So when you say, "Oh well, Crystal man." AKA Tina, AKA Ice, AKA T is a sex drug. You know what I'm saying? We gravitate, we flock to it quickly. You know what I'm saying? Well, oh, let me see what this is about. Now, let me, let me remind you, you can either snort it, you can either smoke it. I wouldn't advise that because your teeth is going to be done undone after like three, four years. I mean, gone. I'm talking about yellow, gone, crusty, broken, gone, toothless. Mm-hmm. Or you can shoot it. I chose shooting it because you get the strongest feeling from shooting it instantly, sexual drive. Um, and it only comes out in your piss and your shit. And you still get to keep your teeth. So I was, I, you know me, you know, you know, I'm very technical. I had to research it up real quick. And you see, I still got my teeth. You know what I'm saying? After nine years of using it. They look nice. <laughs> I honestly didn't know that you could shoot it. I didn't know uh, you could shoot it up. I didn't know that. What it is, it's um, it's 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 like a diamond form, and you just crush it up into powder, put it in a syringe, um, pour some water into it, and then shake it up until it melts. Shoot it in your vein, and then go, 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 fuck, 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 for, and you be you be up fucking for days too. I'm talking about days. You're like, damn, you don't get no sleep when you do meth, and that's why you start looking. That's why your looks start fading. You lose the weight because you don't want food. Yeah. Um, you just sexually active, and you up for like three, four, five, six to seven days before you finally crash. Eventually, that that catches up with your face. You start looking torn down, and, and yeah, because you're, you're not getting any rest. Your body needs rest. Yeah. And, you don't, and you don't and you don't want no water either. So you, your body is sinking in. You're losing your nourishment. You don't want nothing. You don't want food. That's going to fuck up my high. Are you serious? <laughs> food. <laughs> Are you crazy? And fuck this high up? <laughs> no, ma'am. Damn. So <laughs> it, it's crazy how we think. It's crazy. Absolute sa- insanity. <laughs> so, we, okay. Because, you know, we, we share information with the people. And this is definitely to help the people to understand, especially the people that got family members that may be, you know, hooked on crystal meth, because a lot of people won't come out and, and tell your story. So I really commend you, and I sure do appreciate you coming and telling your story. So how long do a high last? Crystal meth can last anywhere from three to um, five days. What? Yeah, you'll feel the effects of it. Um you're always horny. You you never stop being horny. You're just horny for no fucking reason. Um, it t- it takes away your ambitions and your morals. So you fuck anybody. They can, like I said, they can look like job of the hood. You don't care. You just want to fuck. You just want to have sex. They they don't even have to look attractive. You know that's how that's how going it has you. You just want to have sex. You don't. They don't even have to look good no more. You know how when you not using drugs or you just doing your weed and let's say weed and liquor because that's what's considered normal weed and liquor. Right. And you go to the club, right? You looking all good, and you picking your one out in the club that look fine that you might want to try to get the number you can spit your game to. You know what I'm saying? Because you got a certain kind of type. Not when you do meth. No, ma'am, Pam. You don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck at all. You just don't care. You know what I'm saying? And then once you cross that invisible line, you know what I'm saying, into addiction to where your body can't live without it, you know what I'm saying? It just becomes a continuous, crazy cycle that never, ever ends and until... You either loop crystal meth usually, and crystal meth is also a hallucinogen. And so it causes you to think that things are going on that's not. You start accusing people of um, being after you. You start accusing people of talking about you. When they were like, it, it could be, say you go to a sex party, because I went to a lot of those. Um, people could be in a room having a conversation, and I'm thinking that they're in there plotting on me to do something bad to me. These motherfuckers wouldn't worry about me. They just want me to take my clothes off. Right, they right. give up two shit, and I'm like, I hear y'all in there fucking talking about me, and then I, you know how my mouth used to be, you know how I, used to be. I so um, you add bad temper to drugs, and it was just a mess. It was a mess. They they thought I was a psycho. They didn't care. They just wanted me to take my clothes off anyway. They they was like, okay, as soon as we get done having sex, put his ass out. That's because hey, okay, cool. Put the psycho out. Exactly. Put the psycho out. Right. The real cute one. <laughs> yeah. We so get listen, it in, get it out. <laughs> right. So I listen. I am so thankful that you are back with us, EJ. Thank I, you. I, I'm so glad to know that your mind was strong enough to go ahead and do 
what you had to do to change your lifestyle. Now, yeah. let the people know what you're doing today as far as to keep yourself healthy. Because like you already told us you're working out, but give us just, mm -hmm. you know, walking your shoes throughout the week. Um, I what, what they told me in rehab was to make sure you keep a relationship with God. Make yes. sure you go to your Narcotics Anonymous meetings and yes. make sure that you find a hobby and stick to the hobby that makes you happy. So I go to, I mean, so I go to Bible study in church when I can. Um, mm -hmm. I read my Bible every day. Um, I go to, I choose Narcotics Anonymous because those are other addicts that have been through the same thing I have been through. It's nothing like going in a room and you hear and people have done the same crazy things you've done. People have done the same cycle things you've done, have stolen the way you've stolen. Um, we may have used different drugs, but we have the same storyline and we help each other. You can see, oh, they still coming. They still hanging in there. You know what I'm saying? And we and we listen to each other's hardships, even while being clean. Hey, y'all, look, this is what I'm going through today. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got into it with my sister and she um, she accused me of a user. And I'm not, I, I got two years clean. Stuff like that is what we come in here and share about. And we see each other still hanging on and that motivates us. Yes. Then when you see a new person walk in and say, hey, I need some help. Helping somebody else helps us. Yes, yes. And then my hobby is lifting weights. Yes. So I, 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 go to, I go to the gym five days a week and I go to work five days a week and I dedicate Sundays and Mondays to myself or, or making a meeting. So, you know, so, oh, and never and never forgetting where I come from. What it is, is y'all, I don't keep it a secret. I shot yes, it on the mouth. Yes. I'm a recovering addict. I'm a recovering addict. I'm a recovering addict. And I got four, I got four reasons down for you right here. I actually had some ready for you. Okay. Um, number one, um, it rem I call it getting out of social acceptability. You know what I'm saying? My disease and my uh, habit trying to be ashamed of it. Like, you can't tell people you used to use drugs because they might look down on you. You know what I'm saying? But I tell that thing to be quiet. I talk back to my disease and say, there shut you up. Know. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Um, That's right. Number one, y'all, it reminds me, I mean, it's a reminder and it keeps me grounded in reality that drugs kick my ass and destroy my life. So I say it everywhere I go, no matter where I am, no matter if it's a job, if it's a church, if it's on the streets, I say I'm a recovering addict. Number two, it's a warning to others that may drink, still drink today or use drugs. Now, I don't judge nobody. If you drink, you drink, you smoke weed, you smoke weed. But this is to let you know out loud that these are lines. If I'm hanging with you, if I'm with you, I can't cross those lines. You can do what you can do, but I can't. And if you try to tempt me with it or tell me, oh, it's just weed or it's just drinking, then our hanging stops there. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I, uh, I know that if I take a drink today, it's just going to lower my ambitions and make me go get what I really want to get. And so I don't even play with it. I don't even joke with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm still like, I'm still crazy when I hang out with y'all. So I'm still fun. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just, give, I just give virgin drinks. You know what I'm saying? I still go to the, I still go to the club here and there. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a lot of really, I don't have no friends in Orlando yet. So, you know what I'm saying? Number three, you never know who is struggling behind the mask. Mm. I used to put my Mac makeup on and, and, and darken my eyebrows in because I thought nobody knew I was on drugs. I still tried to hold a, tried to hold a job down. So um, I said out loud at work and like that and because you don't ever know who's struggling behind closed doors. Um, people have reached out to me at my job. Other coworkers say, you know what? I hear you talking about recovery all the time and I have a problem with coke or I have a problem with this, I have a problem with that, what can I do? And I tell them, I, I direct them to the meetings, and then they meet all the other people in there sharing about their story, and they see they're not alone. So it, it, it you know, so or I tell them my story. I went to rehab twice, you know what I'm saying? So I was able to help, but I was, I mean, you can't help if they, if, if, if nobody ever knows what's going on, you know what I'm saying? So you, you open the door for people to say, I feel comfortable saying, hey, I have a problem. I heard you say you had one. How did you do it? And then the last one, um, when the desire to use was lifted, I became a tool or an instrument for God. He wants me to go get his sheep. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he, yeah. brought me, he, brought, he brought me out of that situation. So, you know what I'm saying? I can't keep it unless I look back and see somebody else struggling and pull them up too. And look, you can do it. I did it. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I walk past homeless people sometimes. And I give them, I mean, um, and when they ask, I give them something because I was just there. I can't, I just don't know how to say no to them. You know what I'm saying? Because I was just there two years ago. But I always tell them, if I do give them some money, look, I was just doing this, what you're doing right here two years ago. I was just doing this. You can do, you can change. You can change. <laughs>
And so they look at me kind of like I'm crazy. They like, bitch, give me the money so I can go get my next one. But you know what I'm saying? And then I planted the seed. So they look at me, they be like, you don't look like he was there two years ago. You know what I'm saying? So at least I tried. You know what I'm saying? That's all that matters. I tried. Well, listen, I want you to tell the people how they can get... um, in contact with you if they need some form of support because I know people be hitting you up and or either like you said pull mm-hmm. you inside at work let them know how they can um find you on social media if they need to follow you to um stay motivated behind your story and sis you wouldn't you wouldn't even believe it like people on Instagram hit me up friends that we know that you would never even believe have had issues with that stuff like that and it, it just blows my mind sometimes, like you know, what I'm saying um, how much crystal meth not alone. When I, when I we keep in mind, that's not the only drug. We got crack, we got heroin, we got Molly, we got, and even the weed is laced with and fitting all today. So you gotta be careful with all of that stuff. But you, you, um, when you say out loud, "I am recovering," I'm a, I'm a recovering addict. It opens the door, and makes people that much more comfortable to be able to say, "How did you do it?" Yes. So I smile. Let me know. say something. Life, life shows up today still. Life still kicks me. I'm still learning how to gravitate through this thing called life. I got issues, but nothing is um, nothing gives me a reason to use it. I haven't found a good enough excuse to go use. So that's that. But y'all can find me on my Instagram. My Facebook is filled up. It, I, I think I got Max friends on Facebook. But my Instagram is Egypt, E-G-Y-P-T underscore V- Period S. So Egypt versus, but so E G Y P T underscore V period S. Okay. And um Nick, when you uh, go back on Facebook, um, uh, it's somewhere in your settings, honey. Start a follow button. That way people can just start following you because oh, um, okay. I just recently did that as well. And when you okay. get full, people can just start to follow you. I'm gonna do that. Okay. So for anybody out there that's listening, that has struggled with addiction, still struggling with addiction, scared to come out with it, honey, all you got to do is just set your mind, get help, ask somebody that has been there. And here's one person right here that I know will give it to you straight up Mm -hmm. and lead you in the right direction, like straight Mm -hmm. up. Um, Like he said, um, which one? Which place is free? Salvation um, Army. Always free. Army. This, and Salvation usually Army. a Salvation Army is in every city. Everywhere. They're all over. Yeah. So I didn't and even know they did that. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking three meals a day. And when you graduate after the six months, they guarantee you a job working for them. Wow. So not only do they reteach you structure and teach you how to stop using and stay stopped, they offer you a job after that. You all the bad people guaranteed to God. And they got a church in the Salvation Army. So every Salvation Army got a church. They make sure you get your God on too. So it's awesome. I, I was just a little bit too ratchet. That's all. But you know, but you know what I'm saying? I'm still here today. So that's I right. remember they teach you. <laughs> well, um, like, so but like what she was saying, y'all. Like she was saying, you gotta you don't be don't be ashamed to say you need help. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody makes wrong decisions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing to be ashamed of. You're worth it. <laughs> You're worth it. Say you just stand up and say, I, I lost control of this thing. It was yeah. fun at first, but now my life is falling apart and I need help. You don't have to get to rock, rock bottom like I was hallucinating, talking to yourself on the streets of the homeless. You, your bottom is when you stop digging. Is when you stop digging. It don't, you don't have to get to where I got to to say, okay, I finally need some help. So if yeah. you feel like you have a problem, you know what I'm saying? Just say you need help. Just stand up. Just it's okay. Yeah, hey, you know one thing. You have wore a smile this whole time. Like I'm so proud of you. Like, Thank you. So I, I love so, you so much. I miss you, I so, you much. so much. We gotta hang out. We gotta hang I, out. I'm coming to see you. I'm definitely yeah. gonna come and see you. And I got a whole apartment now. You gonna come chill with me? <laughs> yes, honey, and we are gonna have um, find the grown folks way because you know. Yeah. We have, we have grown up now, you know. Yeah, we I'm, I'm so excited baby. to see what, what, what it's like hanging out as grown ups now. We still gonna rock know, the joint, right? you know, so that's we it. We still gonna have fun. What you thought? Yeah. <laughs> we gonna still have plenty of fun and show. Well, I thank y'all so much for having me on this show. This is it is fun. 
fun. This has been real fun for me. I've never, Please I've me. never done nothing like this before. I think you should go around and tell your story more often. Honestly, I've never done nothing like this before. This was cool. So I really yeah. appreciate you and love you so much for asking me. This was fun, y'all. Well, I mean, let me tell you. Let me just give you a little something. What I got going on. I am um, working with different people behind the scenes because you know. Our younger generation, they are doing a lot of things that have, that is not of God. We all have done things that are not of God, but baby, they hurt yeah. one another. They hurt yes. one another. They are dying at an alarming rate. You know where I'm from. I'm from the woods. My, the, where I'm from, the city that's big. Baby, it yeah. just can't die here, honey. It ain't spread it down here, too. I'm surprised that you guys don't hear about Crystal Meth there because I, I mean that's what it gravitates it's to the here. small neighborhoods, the small, it's the here. small town. It it come there hard, hardcore. Yeah, I know some. Oh, people. okay, okay. I I know some people. Yeah. Um, however, I haven't had a conversation with them. Okay. Um, I don't want to overstep my boundaries, you know, so to speak, because like you said, you have to be ready. But mm -hmm. I don't never judge people. I always, last time I saw somebody that I know, that I know, matter of fact, I know them. And um, I made sure they seen me. I, um, I look at I'm like, because I'm thinking to myself, is that so-and-so and so? And I'm like, sure is. So I mm, pulled up beside them and was like, hey, how you doing? I wanted them to see me and know that mm -hmm. I see them. And I asked how they was doing. I was like, all right, well, you know, if you know you ever need anything, just holler at me. Which, you know, I as far as I know, this person is still going down that road. But um I got the perfect solution for you. What's that? Um, what you know what I'm saying? Um you just you just say you, you go to them and say, hey, you know what I'm saying, and this is no disrespect, you know what I'm saying? But I love you, you know what I'm saying? And if you ever decide you need any kind of help. Okay. I know where to get it. Okay. 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 I know where to get it. See, to be mm -hmm. honest, I didn't know what the approach to do. To, to do. Mm -hmm. So if they ever need any kind of help, you know, say if it ever gets too out of hand, I got you. You know, what I'm saying I got, I, I got, I got people. I know where, I know where to go. Just come okay. if you ever need me. I just, I just want to let you know, I love you. No judgment zone. But if you ever need help and get too out of control, I know where to go. I got you. And, see, and then this hug is them. So crazy. This is so wild because God is leading me so much into you know just helping the community and helping stuff i never thought that i would be talking to someone that went through this somebody especially that i know and was like this with yes <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> baby that is that makes it even better like i feel so good about this right now because i feel like i can lead another charge mm -hmm. i can i can say hey i love you and if you ever need some help, if it get out of hand, I know you can get help. Yep. See, I got yep. it. I got yep. it. And then you know what it does? What, it, what that does, that seed is planted in their head and they remember you saying that in their darkest times and they always, they they all, they keep it. You, you, we end up keeping it as a get out of jail free card. So okay. then when it keeps okay. our ass enough, we know we, that, the, believe it or not, that moment is going to come up in their head. They're going to remember to come to you and they're going to be like, look, I finally need help. It may not be that day, that week, that month, that year, but they eventually come to you and they be like, okay, I'm ready. Because you <laughs> know ready. in our community, we push 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 we don't mm -hmm. give people a chance to tell their story express themselves or or we make them feel so bad you know about you know, what they if, do you, if you come down like, hard on the act, if they active and you come down hard on them they're always going to resent or run or fight 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 against you they're right. never going to they're never going to listen so you have to if you're trying to help somebody you got to have an approach that's loving that's caring and letting them know that I'm not trying to force you to do anything you don't want to do. If you ever want the help, I know where to get it. Okay. Because if you say, hey, you need help. We're like, what? I don't need help. You know how we doing I'm, I'm good. Doing. I'm good. Don't you see how good it is? Yeah. I dare, I dare yeah. you suggest that I have a problem. As I'm about to the debris off my nose. You know what I'm saying? I got a little snow, a snow band right here. How dare you? You know what I'm saying? So you got to, it's, it's, uh, and, and, it sounds like it's a lot to do, but it's it costs you nothing to, to just love. Your pre presentation is everything. There you go. You're right. You're right. Presentation is everything. So if you come like, hey, if you ever if you ever need some help, it's getting out of hand. I got you. You know what I'm saying? No judgment. But okay. It's better than hey, I think you need some help. 
Let's have an intervention and tell him that we love him and he needs to get help. He's out of control. Nobody, we're never going to listen to that. We're never going to hear nobody that. We ever listens block. to that. We, nobody. Yeah, we automatically block. Yeah, nobody yeah. listens to that, though. Even the children, the little babies, two and three years old, they don't listen to that. <laughs> Nobody them in a loving type of way. They don't listen to me. Nobody does. Look, they told us they told us not to date so and so, so we was little. We didn't we dated them anyway. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I go. <laughs> they said he gonna break your heart, and guess what? We said fuck mama and daddy, and then he broke our heart. We mama, you were right. He was right. <laughs> you know, you know how the story go. Well, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. So at the end of this broadcast, everybody that's listening or that has watched, um, I'm going to go and research and find out where all the uh, surrounding Salvation Army areas are in our area. And I'm also going to um, put a link in the bio of this video. That way, if you need um, information, you can reach directly out to the Salvation Army themselves. Because I know a lot of people sometimes want to go rehab, but they have a stigma where they feel like, hey, baby, I can't afford that. So once they feel like they can't afford that, then, honey, that's exactly what it is. They just don't worry about it. So, you know. My bad. I lost you. My bad. I'm back. Oh, okay. Yeah, you good. You good. <laughs> But um, they they be scared that they can't afford it, so they just be oh, like, yeah. I can't all you need it. is a social security card and an ID, and you're in there. Okay. And um, if you don't have a social, they tell you how to get one real quick. You know what I'm saying? They, they, I mean, they they it's always connections that it help us. You know what I'm saying? Addicts get what we need quick, so we can get the help that we need. It's all they got all kinds of places. You know what I'm saying? Um. And then sometimes most of most of the Salvation Armies, they're gonna let you in anyway, and then just tell you how to get it when you get in there. Okay, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna make they're gonna they're gonna let you in, get you to bed, and then they're gonna tell you, okay, the next step is it's time for us to get you an ID and social. That's the first mm -hmm. thing you need to do in life is have mm -hmm. at least those two things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it sounds crazy, but even the best people now keep in mind, I went to college. I was at Alabama State. Roxy I tell you, I right. went to Alabama. I was intelligent. I was lost. I am I am intelligent. But yeah. I lost all of those things. I lost basic <laughs> basic human. <laughs> I lost all of that. You know what I'm saying? I had to be retaught how to get an ID, how to get a social, how to do a resume. Like, I had to work like, all, all, that really, stuff, you all over you again. You lost all your basic skills of your yeah. intelligence that you had because we all know that, honey. We have matter, matter of fact, you the first person told me about Facebook. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Do you, you remember that? You told yeah. me you said Yeah. You just just to have you out of your mind, not the same person at all. You know what I'm saying? And that's one reason it hurts your family because they're like why are you doing this to yourself? But they don't understand. We're caught now. We're caught in the grips of the addiction. We're caught in the grasp of it. And it's not letting us go. The enemy is strong. The enemy is using the drugs to, to, to take y'all out, to take us out. You know what I'm saying? And once he got you caught up, all he got to do is get your mind. You know what I'm saying? You lose your mind, he got you. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened. I lost my mind and he had me. You know what I'm saying? All I, thought, all I could think about was the next one. So, by the grace of God, I made it out there and I ain't going back there, man. I had not found a good enough reason today yet to use and life has kicked my ass in the last two years and two months. You and know what I'm saying? What? You're not going to find a reason because that's not, not going to find a reason. That's God, not not going to find a reason. Mm -mm. It's no, it's no reason. People have died in my family. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have, I have lost jobs. I have gotten to people. My family have accused me of still using. They apologize though, but you know what I'm saying? That's just the the, 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 the jab that they still got. You know what I'm saying? When they ain't got nothing else, they'll use that one. You must be getting high again. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that shit don't hurt me today because I know I'm clean. So um, I don't let that bother me. They apologize. All kinds of stuff I'm saying has happened. I tried dating for a second. And he said he didn't like my personality. I was too goofy. I was too, you know what I'm saying? I, I was too, I to joked too much. And to I just said, okay, well, you're not for me. And I, I never talked to him again. You know what I'm saying? People say I cut people off too quickly. No, it's just that I've been through so much that I don't have time for bullshit today. You know what I'm no, saying? I'm not no. going to ever let nobody hurt me again. I've been through that hurt before and I got me on yeah. drugs. So I just don't tolerate bullshit. But yeah, I have not found a good enough reason to pick back up dope. 
So yeah. that's why I'm appreciative to, to Narcotics Anonymous. That's why I go to my meetings at least three times a week. Yes, and I'm so proud of you, brother. Oh, and can I say one more thing, sis? If y'all feel like you, you, you're too scared or too ashamed or you're too nervous about rehab, on Zoom, they have Narcotics Anonymous meetings. Just check it out and go listen to people. If you don't want to say nothing or even say your name, just listen to other people's stories and you can see you're not alone. You can hear from different other people's stories. And Roxy, I, I mean, since you're doing this thing now, you know what I'm saying, um, tomorrow night, if you want to come on the one with me and just see how it works, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and listen, you know what I'm saying, you can just, you, you can listen or you can talk, whatever you feel, you know what I'm saying? What and just see how it, how it, it's eight o'clock every night. You know that's the time my show start, right? What oh, do, okay. What time do it oh, end? Um, like ten. Ah, I can I can catch it right at nine o'clock, and I'll. Um, okay. well, I'll I'll deal with you separately. I mean, just I, I'm um make sure I put my number. We'll, we'll give you my real phone number so we can talk outside the show. Okay. Right. But um, y'all. Narcotics Anonymous, they got meetings live. They got them Zoom, just in case you ain't, you, you know what I'm saying, you're a little bit shy right now, too shy to hug this guy. You know what I'm saying? They got, they got it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't got to just go straight to rehab if you don't feel comfortable with doing that. But just try going to some place that you can hear your story being told because you, I guarantee you, you're going to hear your story. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see that you're not alone. Some of the things you've done, we've done. So it's cool. And, um, and that's all I can. This mm -hmm. is what I want to also tell the people if um, you have been compelled by um, Egypt's story and you want to donate um, some furniture or something to him, um, contact me, let me know, and me and him will work something out. Um, and because you know, at the end oh. of the day, I know how it is out there, honey, it's hard out there. You know what I'm saying? Even when yeah. you got yourself together, it's still not easy. It's still so, hard, yeah. If uh -huh. you can compare the Egypt you. story, baby, we're going to help <laughs> Egypt out, baby. So y'all get y'all coins together, baby. We just going to help him do some things. Oh, uh -huh. that's sweet. Yeah, I love you. Yeah, <laughs> you know how we do it. But see, I'm telling you, this is, this is God. This ain't me. This ain't me. This is just me reaching out trying to help other people because i've decided that's what i want to do with my life i want to help people that's awesome so, too i told you i've had so much fun this was so fun so if you don't want me to come back to be a guest again let me know i'm gonna come if y'all if you do a little group Anytime, thing, let baby, me know. Listen, i'm ready to travel the world to tell the truth i want to I want okay to well that's good place. you know i'm down for the cause you know yes. we remember me and you used to travel anyway yes. <laughs> me, me you miss shine all them all them them jokers back in the day Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. And like, thank y'all for listening to my story. You know what I'm yes. saying? I really yes. appreciate you. And we appreciate you for coming on. And um, we will definitely be talking again soon. And everybody, thank you for tuning in. And once again, you already know the slogan. Talk about it Tuesday. Millionaire pending. I'm your girl, B. Brown, the revolutionary. You know how we get down. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Love y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>